is always in style. We're so glad that you've joined us. This is KXEX 1550 AM, Saturdays at 4, Sundays at 6. You can catch the show, Powell to the People. We talk politics, education, religion, technology, sports, values, and healthy communities, and anything else you want to talk about. Will uh, you send me a note? I'd be glad to look it up. We'll have a discussion. I'll bring somebody on that's an expert a lot more knowledgeable than I am, and we'll talk about it, and we'll have some fun with it. Uh, also, good news with Larry Powell can be heard five days a week, Monday through Friday, right here on KXEX 1550 AM. Nothing but good news stories. Uh, you know, folks, I've written over 1,900 of those stories, and I just love the opportunity. Monday through Friday, 10 and 4, you want to be uh, pumped up and encouraged. Uh, listen to Powell, to the people uh, during uh, the weekends and on weekdays. Catch good news with Larry Powell, and you'll hear a good news story. I do. I need to tell you, I was on a plane coming back from uh, Washington D.C. Um, and heading to Phoenix, and then from Phoenix to Fresno. And Dot and I were talking. My wife and uh, somebody in the back said, uh, "Is that the good news man up there?" And somebody heard the voice, and so I guess the voice is distinctive. Anyway, we're glad you're with us today. Uh, I did want to just talk a little bit about uh, some things. You know, uh, the world is a crazy world, and I've mentioned this time and time again. The most important positions, I think, for elected officials anywhere in the nation are school board, because school boards are local. They're connected. They know exactly what people are thinking. Um, they impact everything that happens uh, in our area. And so school board elections, I really have a lot of respect for anybody who runs for school board. And today I've got a very special guest with me, a longtime friend, Dr. Marcy Masumoto, who is a currently on the Fresno County Board of Education. And she has been a school board member now will be 10 years worth of time, six years in Sanger Unified and now four years on the county office. And you're getting ready to run again. I am, Larry. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. It's a delight to be here. Well, we're excited about having you. Uh, uh, Marcy has been involved, in, Dr. Marcy, has been involved in all kinds of things over her career. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and, and you're going to get to hear uh, more about it. Uh, she's married to a rather famous and friendly guy, uh, David Mas Masamoto, farmer writer uh, here in, in the area. And many of you know... Uh, David Moss. Uh, he and I served on board together. We've done a lot of things together. He was a student at Sanger High School when I was teaching out there. And uh, so I've known Moss for a long time. But he wrote uh, Changing Season, A Father, A Daughter, A Family Farm by David Moss Masamoto with Nico, Nikiko Masamoto. Uh, it's a really good read. And if you like peaches, you'll love this story, I'll tell you. So you got to get uh, got to get that book. And you can get it on Amazon and you can get it probably at Barnes and & Nobles and a bunch of other places as well. Well, uh, it, it's so unique, Marcy, because uh, you and I have been politically uh, connected because I support your candidacy for school board, but we've also been uh, educationally connected for many, many years because I was county superintendent while you were on the board in Sanger. And so we had a occasion to get to talk uh, uh, education on a lot of different levels during that time. And then we worked together, uh, Fresno, you were at Fresno uh, State, you're still there at Fresno State as a consultant, but we got to work with leadership programs and do a bunch of things with that as well. So we have a long history. It's been a long time, Larry. We've, we, there's a lot of uh, dust behind us and a lot to do yet a, ahead. But, yeah. um, we've done some really fun things and, and valuable things across the valley. Yeah, it's interesting. And dust is appropriate for a farmer's wife. I'll tell you. There you go. <laughs> so, well, uh, Marcy, where did you grow up? I am a California girl. Okay. I, I was not raised in this area. I was born in Pomona and at age two moved to the high desert in Southern California okay. to a little town called Apple Valley. Oh, I'm very familiar with Apple Valley. Okay. Yes. Yeah. My dad was a dairyman. My mom was a school teacher and, wow. and became the first school administrator in her school district. Is that and, right? And had a very long career uh, there. And wow. Retired as a, a associate superintendent. So you come by education and farming naturally. I do. It's kind of like a repeat of history, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Really cool. So did you come uh, to Fresno from Apple Valley? Not directly. Okay. No, no. I, I went to college in Riverside and Loma Linda. I attended Loma Linda University. Yeah. Um, and then uh, worked in Riverside for 
three years. I worked for the Riverside County Superintendent of Schools. Is that Believe right? Believe it or not, that was my first professional job wow. in college. I was a nutrition advisor for child early childhood programs. Fantastic. At that time. And you were serving all the districts in I was, Riverside I County. I was serving all the child care programs in yeah. districts across Riverside County as a yeah. uh, nutrition advisor. So right. being a school so. board member for Fresno County Office of Education or Fresno County Superintendent of Schools now makes a lot of sense because you started there professionally and you're now back. It's, it's amazing how things circle around. Exactly. <laughs> it really exactly. is. It really yeah. is. Well, so, uh, so after college, uh, you started working there. What got you to Fresno? You know, it's a funny thing because things happen for a reason. I was at the time doing a little consulting through my job with the State Department of Education. And okay. So I occasionally had to jump a plane from Ontario to Sacramento. And one evening as I sat down in my seat. I sat next to this really friendly looking guy who uh, I was talking to, who is not my husband, <laughs> but was my future uh, major professor at UC Davis. Wow. We talked about jobs and careers and life goals. And he convinced me that going to UC Davis for the um, master's program in community development right. was, was the appropriate next step. Wow. I know. So I followed through, I applied, I got in. And this is where it started, Larry. The first day we had an orientation program. Um, all the students were invited from the prior year and the incoming year. And we're all sitting around a table and, and in walks this young man carrying <laughs> a box of table grapes that oh, his, I love it. his family had proudly grown and he was bringing to share with everybody. And all the women in the room that knew him because he was a second year said, ah, there's Moss. <laughs> and I look at him and it's like, oh, okay. I love so it. I love it. That was the beginning. That was the beginning. <laughs> well, that started a, a long adventure, no doubt about it. And obviously his roots in Del Rey uh, and local and Sanger and, you know, that whole community, uh, he has such a longstanding history there, which you have become a part of as well. And uh, and then being on the school board in Sanger for six years, you were on the school board when Sanger was going through some absolutely fantastic uh, accomplishments uh, academically and every other way. Yeah, Sanger is a is an amazing story of a turnaround district. Yeah, um, you know, having started at a point where the test scores and academic achievements were probably as low as they could be, to um, becoming a complete turnaround district and a model district for um, the rest of the state and the nation. Yeah. I mean, the superintendent that was in place at the time that I was there, Mark Johnson, Mark Johnson. was named National Superintendent of the Year. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't. You know, and, and so I'm really proud of the work done in that district. And, and it's a major example of focusing on kids first. Yes. Um, and, and holding everyone accountable from students to teachers to administrators. Yeah. And, and I think that's what education should be all about. It's providing the best we can give them. Yes. The, them the students, them the schools, them the teachers, and then expecting outstanding results. Amazing. You know, you, you got to work with one of my really good friends, Ken Marcantonio. Uh, he was a teacher at Sanger High when I was there uh, back in the 70s. Uh, and it's, uh, the unique thing about Sanger is – Folks who came there stayed there. Um, he came there as a young teacher and then uh, did his entire career there and then went back on the school board. And, and when you look at, at the folks in Sanger, for whatever reason, once they got to Sanger, very few left. You know, they wanted to finish their careers there. It, it, it's a, a community that's, that's really outstanding in terms of, you know, quality of life and livability and, and how much people care about each other and yeah. especially how much they care about students and the kids and the schools. Yeah. Pretty amazing. The schools are center um, to just about everything in town. Yeah. And as a newcomer, you know, once you kind of break through, you've got to, you got to have a connection <laughs> it seems because you know, it's a little challenging to be in, at least it was at the yeah. time that I arrived 40 years ago. Right. Um, as a newcomer, Sometimes it took a little time to break so through. So who's this new girl? In. Exactly. <laughs> if you didn't graduate from Sanger High at the time, yep. you know, you weren't necessarily part of the in crowd. <laughs> but, you know, if you could convince people that 
your family and your roots were there and yeah. that you're not going anywhere and that you really care as much as they do. No, exactly. And, you know, the arms are always open and surrounded. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you know, but my dad was born in Sanger, graduated from Sanger in 1943. I was born in Sanger. So I've got 150 relatives still there. You know? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope they vote, Larry. <laughs> yeah, they do. There's no doubt about it. You know, In fact, uh, w once I tell them what to do, uh, they'll listen to me. I've been very fortunate that way. I've got great people. And I can't believe how fast our time goes, but we're already done with our first segment, Marcy. Uh, folks, we've got uh, just a, a great guest with us today, uh, Dr. Marcy Masamoto, who is a member of the Fresno County Board of Education. She's running for re-election election has uh, deserves the second term done a really good job during that time listen you're listening to powell to the people where civility is always in style we will be right back you're listening to powell to the people write it down people on the best talk in town hey welcome back we're so glad that you're with us uh, powell to the people where civility is always in style you're never going to get criticized and put down and things if you're here with me on my show uh, we're going to talk civilly we're going to uh, talk about issues we're going to encourage one another we want our community to be an absolutely great place uh, kxex 1550 a.m saturdays at four sundays at six uh, once again you can also catch me uh, good news with larry powell uh, nothing but good news stories monday through friday 10 and 4 every monday through friday so if you want to hear a good news story, come and join us. Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, you got it. We stream it. You can hear it. Uh, we're so glad that you're uh, with us today. And and I'm so excited to have a real good friend of mine, Dr. Mas Marcy Masamoto. Um, Marcy and I have worked together over the years. Uh, you know, it, it gets crazy when you start thinking about it. Uh, 10, 15 years goes by in no time at all. Uh, I was elected, uh, well, I was county, I was superintendent at Central Unified 2001. So, and started doing work with Fresno State during that time as well. But, uh, you know, 20, 21, 22 years goes by in no time. <laughs> it sure does, yeah. doesn't it? Oh. You, know, it, it you, you hate to admit how many years it's been, but um, it just seems like yesterday. Seriously. It does. Yeah, it really does. And I and one of our good friends uh, in common, uh, Walt Buster, former uh, superintendent uh, in Clovis, who came to Fresno Unified for six months to be superintendent in an interim role. Um, great guy. Uh, leadership was one of his key things. And uh, both of us had a chance to work with with Walt. And uh, I think he's up in uh, Northern California now or uh, San Francisco Bay Area. He's in, in Marin County now. Yeah. But he's still an active guy. Yeah, he he did, that work. doesn't change. Uh, well, he did such a good job. And and it's so neat to have people in common as well as each other in common. And then uh, obviously Mas, uh, Masamoto, a former student of mine, Fresno at Sanger High School, uh, amazing stuff together. Well, we've been talking about, uh, you know, just a little bit about your history and things. So uh, you ended up at uh, in Fresno. So uh, when did you first start uh, working at Fresno State? I started working at Fresno State in two different ways. Okay. And it was, it was all about Walt Buster. You know? Is that right? It, it, relationships really are everything. So I and they been, matter. I had been working on my doctoral degree okay. at you know, uh, UC Davis, uh, CSU. So Fresno. Davis, it was, CSU. It was a joint program. Yeah. And he was one of my professors. Yeah. And I told him that I was going to leave my job, my full-time job, um, so that I could work on my dissertation. Okay. And he knew that what my last day of work was. And I happened to be in the car on the way home from my last day of work. And he calls me. Oh, man. And he says, Marcy, what are you going to do on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> and he offered me a position. I love it. Um, a part-time position, which was perfect because then I could do my full research and my dissertation. Yeah. Um, and at the at initially... We were working under another organization at Fresno State. I remember, um, yes. And uh, that was in 2005. Right. And um, 10 years later, I finally left that 
role at the Central Valley Educational Leadership Institute. It's now called the Welty Center. Yeah, but um, that was called C Valley, became the Welty Center. Right. Yes. Right. And so we did a lot of really um, novel things at the time for our valley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, uh, you work not only with superintendents, a lot with superintendents because they're so key to what happens and they're so key to being able to release their other folks at their district administration or, or at high school or middle school or elementary school principals to come and, and see Veli, which became the Welty Institute. I mean, r- remarkable. Uh, there wasn't anything li- really like that in the Valley at all. And in the state, there wasn't anything that I think had as good a group of people working there uh, and doing great things for kids here in the Valley. Exactly. I mean, it it was a novel concept, um, especially here. And the focus was on uplifting our educational leaders at all levels. Um, Instead of school districts paying hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars to send their staff out um, to receive training by national experts, we said, why don't we bring them here? Yes. Uh, You know, a novel idea at the time. Sean Maple. There you go. (laughs) All of these people. Um, And so we hosted uh, annual conferences. We also recognized the needs in our rural districts that don't have the funds, don't have the layers of support that they needed uh, help. Well, and you know, uh, Marcy, one of the things that was really unique about that, uh, people who went through Civelli, other folks got to see their, what they were able to do. And they ended up in some of those rural districts uh, as key leaders, uh, whether superintendent or other thing, but they came through the Fresno State Leadership Program in order to make that happen. So it was tremendously valuable to everybody in Fresno County and throughout the Valley. Absolutely. You know, and, and part of our focus that, that I was especially interested in and involved in was about rural schools and rural yep. leadership in rural schools. That's what I had done my dissertation Your dissertation on, was in that, yeah. Um, on leadership practice in high-performing schools. Yep. What do we know about how good leadership impacts schools? Yeah. And so we um, put together a network of rural school leaders. I love it. Principals, superintendents, if they had assistant superintendents. And we met regularly. Sometimes it was monthly. Sometimes it was quarterly. It depended on the time of the year and yeah. availability. But we focused on a host district. So we met in a district. That's fantastic. A local district. We we let the superintendent and our principal bring to us their problem. What was their challenge? Yeah. We looked at their data together with them, and we came up with solutions with them um, so that they could apply to their districts. And the significant changes that occurred, both in leadership practices as well as in achievement for those kids, were amazing. You know, and before C. Valley and the, uh, the Welty Institute, you had to go to Stanford, Harvard, or someplace like that, a think tank someplace, when you basically created our own think tank right here. Exactly. You know, an opportunity for people to, to have tremendous, and you know, one of the other unique things, I don't know if folks know, but those who were in the doctoral program often ended up doing projects that benefited us in the Valley as a result because of the connection with Civelli, the the uh, doctoral program, all of it meshing together, we benefited from it. Exactly. And, you know, and you were speaking of Harvard. A couple of us did go to Harvard. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and got some very specific training and came back and became trainers of trainers. Yes. Um, you know, how do you do classroom visits? Yeah. They weren't, they weren't a common thing, you know, and it's, and it's a powerful leadership practice to visit not only classrooms in your own schools, but classrooms in other schools. That's right. And observing how are students responding, how are to instructional practices, and then like breaking it apart and figuring <laughs> out what works best for you. Exactly. And what works best in your classroom. Yeah, so it was fantastic. Pretty exciting. Yeah, one of the places I went was Temple University in Philadelphia uh, with the same kind of thing. I was in Chicago, so it was unique because we, we ended up bringing back a lot of things that were very valuable to folks here. So it was exactly. quite unique. Exactly. And one of the spinoffs, you know, at that point in time, the county uh, superintendent of schools didn't have the full staff capacity to do the type of support yes. um, that they do today. Yep. And so uh, having worked together between the university and the county superintendent of schools, I think it created a strong model that continues on today. Yep at both organizations. No, I agree. And in fact, uh, when I uh, was county superintendent, we had a contract with Sprint 
uh, because we had some towers that we basically leased out, which gave us some resources that we could use so that we could partner with Fresno State and with uh, other institutes and uh, and really change the way things took place. So, And then Jimmy Ovino has continued that on and right. as county superintendent. It's pretty amazing. And now Michelle Kofer, Dr. Michelle Kofer, is going to continue it. So we've had quite a string of folks that I think uh, love the Valley, love the kids, love the teachers. Uh, it's going to be good for all of us. And now you're a part of the county you know, uh, Fresno County uh, Board of Education as a board member. Before we get started with all of that, who do you represent? What Tell us about the area that you represent, because I don't think people realize how big an area you represent. Right. Thanks. The, the area, the areas that we represent, there are five um, Board of Education members on, for the County Superintendent of Schools or County Board of Education. And those areas are the same as the supervisor areas, yeah. the county supervisor areas. I'm area four, which is the entire South County. Um, with the redistricting this year, it includes more of Southeast Fresno okay. than it had in the past. So uh, the Southeast Fresno portion uh, um, that is part of Sanger Unified School District is largely in this area. Then all of Sanger, and I'm gonna head east, then, you know, Reedley, Orange Cove, yes. coming back west, Parlier, Selma, Fowler, Kingsburg, part of Easton, you know, so it's uh, amazing. Washington Unified, yeah. Layton, Riverdale, Carruthers, Huron, Coalinga. There are 23 school districts in that area. It's Coalinga. one of the largest in terms of school districts around the county has 32 school districts, yes <laughs> and 23 of them are either partially or wholly in yeah um, area four well and think about all of the uh, small communities out in fresno county you just named almost all of them there are 15 you know areas and most of them are in your area exactly and there are there are quite a number of uh, small k-8 districts yes you know like monroe and burl and and clay elementary i forgot to mention kingsburg kingsburg's in, in there as well yes um and even there's some students that are or, or some families that are voters that are in other outlying counties that's correct well. tulare right danuba yep you know part of tulare county yep. some part of kings part of monterey county isn't that something that overlaps with district people yeah. don't have a clue about how big it is and and school districts aren't exactly the same as other political uh, distinctions uh, they go where they want to go exactly no one yeah. no one knows the exact boundaries unless you have a kid that's <laughs> on the wrong side of the boundary then you want them then to you know them. that's right <laughs> well folks you're listening to powell to the people where civility is always in style we're so glad you're with us uh, we've got today dr marcy masamoto a good friend of mine board of education for the fresno county office of education we're going to be right back and we're so glad that you've joined us. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. People on the best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. We're so glad that you're with us. Uh, it's amazing how fast these segments go, folks. Uh, when you've got somebody interesting like Dr. Marcy Masamoto and uh, all of the things that she's been involved in, all the way from Pomona to Fresno and a circuitous route that took her through the central part of the valley up to Sacramento and uh, now on the Board of Education here, having been on the board in Sanger, uh, just a rich history, Civelli, uh, which was a leader. Institute out of Fresno State became the Welty Center. Uh, we've got so many things going. You have such a vast background, uh, Marcy. It's such a neat thing. I want to, you know, how uh, schools often have a bring and brag time, <laughs> okay, where kids get to bring something from home and brag about it or, you know, that kind of thing. I want to do a little segment with you on that. So what are some of the things that you're particularly proud of uh, at the Fresno County Office of Education that, uh, you know, you've been on that board now for four years at the end of this year and starting uh, hopefully a, a second term, a second four years coming up here in January. But what are some of the things that they've been doing that you're really happy with? Well, you know, the county board is a little uh, unique to yes. uh, school districts in, in terms of responsibility. And I just want to clarify, the county board is not a super board. 
it, it does not have any jurisdiction <laughs> over any of the other school districts. No, that's a good and, point because people and, think it does. Exactly. And, and there's kind of a short list of direct responsibilities and a long list of indirect responsibilities. Yes. So some of the things I'm most proud of um, have to do with both. Some okay. of the direct responsibilities, I think um, as a board member, we, as board members, we have been very responsible in terms of our uh, hearing of appeals for inter-district transfers, yes. um, expulsions, and um, denied charter school yeah. uh, petitions. Authorizations. And, authorization. yeah. and those are some of the key primary responsibilities in addition to overseeing the court schools. Let me go back to the, to uh, what you just said about the uh, expulsions and you know hearings and, and transfers and things like that. The one key area is that you have uh, a, a chance to hear, have a hearing on some uh, requests that come if a school district denies something. Uh, you can hear uh, some of those, but uh, it, it's not as uh, as for sure as people like it to be. People would like to be able to say, Marcy, you, got, you can make this decision. You guys on that school board, if you want to, you can do it. But the law prescribes certain things and, and describes certain things you can't do as well. And, and yet trying to help people understand your local school board is in charge of most things. You provide a tremendous amount of leadership and guidance and direction and encouragement and, and you do some of the appeals and especially transfers. I mean, everybody wants their kid to go to the school they want them to go to. That's just the way we're put and together. There are always heartbreaking stories. Always. Oh, you yeah. Know, there's something, some other reason yeah. other than just the bounce boundary. Oh, it, yeah. And I've heard many of those appeals over the years and they are heart wrenching. They're, yeah. they're hard, but you still have to apply the law. Exactly. Know? Exactly. And, and so that's the challenge is, you know, in, a, in essence, it's, it's an, a judicial type role. It is. Um, and even if you know people in that district, you have to be completely um, objective. Independent from them. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. And, and, um, I don't find that part the hard part. The hard part is oftentimes the decision that yes. needs to be made that actually hurts somebody. Right, right. You know, um, but I think it's an important work. It is. And I'm very proud of that work. Um, some of the other things that we're responsible for is overseeing the superintendent's budget, the yes. Fresno County Superintendent of Schools budget, and, and, you know, working in concert with the county superintendent and their team. Yeah, because that's very unlike a district, because in a district, the board hires the superintendent. In the county, the superintendent is also an elected official. So it's a different balance. Exactly. And the county yeah. superintendent's responsible for all the programs, yes. and all the staff, yep. and, and all of the employment issues. So we don't deal with employment issues at yeah. all, which, which you may be saying, thank district, you. It's completely <laughs> reversed from Isn't that the something? school district, both. The, the types of issues that we're dealing with, yeah. you know, that the closed session time is, you know, m minuscule compared to yes. a school district closed session time, which typically is dealing with student discipline and or employee Employee issues. discipline, yeah. Um, uh, but with the, the county superintendent of schools, we have, have been very supportive of some of the new programs and, and projects that have been undertaken. And some of the most impressive, I believe, um, include the chartering of Sea Tech High School. Isn't that incredible? It, it's an amazing program. It's in Fresno. It's open to any student yes. in the county yeah. um, that um, applies. And these students, we just graduated the first class. First hundred. Of seniors. Yeah. And the, the statistics are amazing. A hundred percent of those students walked across the stage with college credits. Wow. 90% um, with more than 35 college credits. Unbelievable. Um, and um, the majority of the class received their associate degrees from Fresno City College at the same time that they finished their That's an amazing collaboration. Enrollment. Yes. You know, it's a fantastic example of dual enrollment and the power that we have in our school systems to be working collaboratively together with our colleges. And it, you know, what Amazing. a great opportunity. The other thing that those students had opportunities for were internships, working internships. Um, 100% of those graduating students had internships in industries. 
So we're talking in, wow. man, in manufacturing, engineering, um, construction type, high paying jobs. Most of them had job offers the day they graduated wow. from high school, which is just remarkable. 96% also met acceptance requirements for four year university. So it's not that they were just oh, that's amazing. Um, getting job skills, yeah. they were also advancing their So they could to- choose the path they wanted to go. Exactly. And I'm a strong proponent of both. Yes. It's not an either or situation. I agree. Book. It's got to be both. Let's focus on both academics and job skills so that students can choose. Not only choose, it's because again, it's not an either and or. I know the first job I got after college yeah. was because of job skills I had I love it. before college. Yes, right? <laughs> exactly. Know. Well, I know how valuable it is, those service industries. Um, I, I'm fond of telling the story about uh, my refrigerator went out and I ha- had somebody come in to fix it. It took him three minutes. He replaced a part and I said, how much does that cost? And he said, $100, $3 for knowing where to put it, and $3 for the part, 97 for knowing where to put it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and how true it is, you know, we're willing to pay, and there are some great jobs that kids can get. We also know the value of uh, being college educated, even if it's an AA degree, uh, because you see the world differently, you you think differently, you you read more, you you are involved in your community more. I mean, there's so many good things that happen Absolutely. out of that. Absolutely, I think the college degree is yes, it's it's the content, but it's also the process. It's understanding how to organize yeah. yourself, how to how how to pace yourself, how to set goals, how to yep. how to get through to completion, how to work with others. It's amazing, yeah. yeah. When you think about you went through your college degree, your master's degree, your doctoral degree, you know what it's like to start from the beginning and go all the way through to a terminal. And terminal doesn't mean dead, folks. Terminal degree means you've reached that apex. You well, know. Exactly. And I, if you don't mind, I'd love to tell the story about how and why I got my doctoral degree. Yeah. And when I was in college, I mean, I was a public health major and my advisor said to me, you know, you have the capacity, you could become a doctor. Why don't you become a doctor? Wow. And I was like frozen, <laughs> terrified I of love what it. that would entail. Sure. I, I was a good test taker, but I hated taking tests. And my vision of the, the trajectory that a doctor had to go through was test after test after test. Yeah. So I chose a different path. But through my career, um, my job before I applied for the doctoral program was working with UCSF Fresno medical education and I was recruiting our uh, med students to come to Fresno to serve and do their residency here yeah and what I learned in that time so this is like 25 years later yeah um what I learned was I was as smart as they were I just it's just the stick to itiveness yeah. the process, setting the goals and sticking to it. Exactly. And that's when I decided to go for my doctorate degree. I love it. In education. So, um, and the reason I wanted my doctorate degree actually fits our conversation today is because I wanted to understand the entire system from cradle to career, yeah. all of the education. I had worked in one way or another professionally in each of those segments. But I wanted to understand the leadership structure and the policy Boy, process that's great. and the budget. And, and and that was my preparation for school board. Isn't it? <laughs> and that's really good preparation, let me tell you. Uh, I can't believe we're down to one minute left in our third segment here. Uh, but, you, you know, it is a, an amazing story uh, when you think that uh, from Pomona to a doctorate degree to the Board of Education and now impacting Literally, what do we have? Uh, maybe 200 and some odd thousand. Students yeah. Students in Fresno yeah, County. Yeah, Fresno Absolutely. County. And then um, the um, uh, community colleges also report budget wise to uh, the uh, superintendent. So there's some other issues there that happen. Uh, superintendency is actually a pre K 14 position. So uh, the collaboration with Fresno City College makes a lot of sense and with all of the, the state center community college districts. So we've been very fortunate here in uh, uh, Fresno County 
We've got lots of good things. Carol Goldsmith at uh, Fresno City College is a great collaborator. Uh, Fre- uh, Jim Yovino is, and she have worked together on all kinds of things. And SeaTech is a great example of that. Folks, you got to check out SeaTech. It's one of the best high schools you'll ever run into. There's only 100 spots a year available, but boy, is it unique. Uh, listen, you've been listening to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. We're going to be right back. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. People on the best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to Powell to the People. Listen, I have in my hand right now for you radio listeners, uh, Facebook, I'll show this to you in just a second, organic jam that was basically grown right here in uh, Fresno County. Give peach a chance. I love that. Uh, join the Masamoto Peach Corps, masamoto.com. Folks, this is uh, a really, take a look at that. That is really unique. And uh, thank you for the gift. Uh, that's really cool. And it also says Moss, Marcy, Nikito, and uh, Corey. Corio. 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 Yes. Uh, Masamoto. 2022. Uh, how unique. Uh, but, you know, we've been very blessed in the Valley. Uh, 25% of everything grown in America is grown right here in the Valley. Uh, what an amazing thing. So my grandfather was a farmer, so I, I, I know what you're going through and, and growing up with uh, farming being a part of who you were and, and picking those grapes and having the, the wasps hit you in the eye and zoom in on you. And, and, you know, but I'll tell you what, you learn a lot about yourself when you're you know, involved in farming and having to live day to day and is what's the weather going to be like tomorrow and and it also makes you want to go to school so, you know, so <laughs> exactly so. it also teaches you a, a amazing work ethic yep, uh, yep. I, I know having grown up on a dairy you know that's 24 7 all the yeah they don't stop milking do they the year. and you know when i found out from my husband that the trees go dormant and there's not as much work on on a farm with uh, peaches and nectarines. He's on vacation. Great. It's like, hey, what a what a sloucher, you know? <laughs> I can do that. So, I know, love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, we're so blessed here in uh, Fresno County and in the Valley because we have a lot of farm worker kids who are absolutely brilliant and have not, uh, un- unless someone takes an interest in them, a lot of times they don't get to to demonstrate how good they are. Uh, and we've got a lot of made it to the Ivy League universities and, and been very, very successful. So we're blessed here to have uh, a, a sense that uh, anybody can make it. We're going to help them make that happen. And we've got key people in, in the community that have done that. So and that's our responsibility to yeah. make sure that we yep. create opportunities for every single child, regardless of what ability, at what language they speak. Yep. Um, that it's as long as we do our best, we expect them to do their best as well. Yeah, and, and they will, and they and will they'll step up to it. You oh, know, absolutely. You have high expectations. They will rise to it. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Uh, I I know so many students who uh, you'd think, how in the world? Could they be successful? And they end up with their doctorate. They end up being fantastic. Can be a doctor. In fact, I met several of them who became doctors themselves, uh, teaching universities. I mean, doing all kinds of stuff. It's it's really cool, and I'm really proud of, and of Fresno we County. When we were recruiting for med students to come here to do their their doctorate I'm, yep. and their residency, residency because we wanted them to come back yes and yes. we were looking for students that wanted this kind of environment exactly you know, that maybe they grew up in the midwest or maybe yep. they grew up in the south you know but they were looking for a, a family oriented uh, community to come to exactly that's what we had to offer you know i i get the privilege uh, every year of emceeing several um, graduations for doctors here in town and many of them are recruited here and stay here some are recruited from here to stay here and it's so unique to see that happen and to hear their stories about i'm the first one in my my family to get a a degree let alone become a doctor and they're they're committed to staying here they're working in parlier they're working you know in uh, all kinds of areas out in fireball wherever it is and it's just unique 
very unique. Okay, we're down to our last segment. We got about seven minutes left. What do you see as some of the key uh, needs that are coming up for you know education and and you as a board member and, and what are you wanting to focus on in the next four years? Well, I think right now, I mean, and this has been consistent for me from my last term as well. I mean, I think making meeting basic needs is yeah. essential, and by that I mean food, housing health care, mental health care. The pandemic really socked it to us, right? Big time. Um, and, yep. and families have been suffering in a lot of ways. And I am so proud of the Fresno County Superintendent of Schools who had the foresight to create the arrangement with the Fresno County Behavioral Health. Yes. Is now providing uh, psychological support in every single school in the county. We need to do more of that yes. because our, not only do our students need that kind of help, but so do the families and so do our faculty and staff. You know, and think students. think about that. Finally, you've married education and mental health for kids and it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so that is a priority. Another priority, especially for our rural areas, is connectivity. I mean, it's been an issue that we've <laughs> advocated for. I've advocated through the county uh, the, or the, the uh, California School Boards Association and the California County Board. You're one of our representatives here. I am here. a representative yeah. and I've had the opportunity to advocate and, you know, we're finally getting the resources. And, you know, it might be one of the silver linings of the pandemic Yes, because we finally demonstrated to people the need that <laughs> every household needs to have access, whether it's for school or for health care. Yes. And, and so connectivity is critical in every community. Um, and then also because of the pandemic, you know, there was a lot of learning loss. Big you know, time, our, yes. Our teachers work so, so hard to try to keep kids connected and engaged. And it's just not the same. Right? While, while the internet and online learning is helpful, it's not the same. And it it's is not, not as, as um, complete and as thorough. And you can't replace impactful. a teacher. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, we really need to focus on um, the... Uh, recovery of our students and their academic learning because I think there, yep. there has been some learning loss on, on many students everywhere. And so the extra effort, the extra time, the extra supports, the extra tutoring so critical. is so critical. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really committed to ensuring that that occurs. You know, those are three really, really positive things that can make a difference for families, make a difference for a community. Um, you know, obviously, if you're not in good health, you can't learn, you know, so we've got to have that. Uh, the behavioral health side of it. And with uh, all of the isolation that took place during COVID, when you think about it, we have kids who lost how to get along with each other. And so social emotional training and reprogramming and, and helping kids with that, uh, the governor has put a boatload of money into that in order to help make up for those two years. Uh, and we have to just accelerate that and make sure I represent a company, in fact, that is doing that kind of work. And uh, we're, we're, I think we're in 80 school districts right now because it's so critical. How do you get people back to getting along? You know? Oh, absolutely. And, and discourse is so key in our yeah. world today. Um, you know, it's unfortunate because I agree with you that the pandemic caused many of us to be isolated. And, you know, you, we have to exercise that social muscle yes and and learn how to communicate again and, <laughs> exactly and communicate face to face you know there's many organizations that are choosing to continue to go um virtual and while there are right. benefits to that it's not the same not the it's same it's not the same as the human relationship and it's not really at all. all about relationships isn't it oh absolutely absolutely and you know a teacher can inspire you where a computer cannot now, you might learn something from a computer, but you can't be inspired by it. It just doesn't work. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to never again having a pandemic, but uh, there's a high likelihood that we'll have another one sometime in the future. Uh, I, I do have a recommendation for every kid and a requirement that I would like to see. If you're in front of the computer dressed for school, you cannot make it go black so we can see you the whole time because kids are really good at technology. They're a far above us. And so we had so many kids not dressed for school. They were dressed in their lounging wear, you know, whatever that is. They would make the screen go black so they could still hear the teacher, but you couldn't have the kind of interaction you had to have. So I, I really want to make sure if we ever go through this again, 
you're at school when you're in front of that computer. We got to at least keep some of that stuff going, you know, because it was crazy. Well, we're down to about two minutes left, Marcy. Um, tell me uh, any last things you'd like to say. Uh, why are you running again? I, you've done ten years. You've done your term, your time. I, why are you doing it again? I'm running again, both because I have the energy and the commitment. I believe. Our children are our future, and um, there's no better way to help our children and our communities and our future world than to educate them Yep. and provide as much support and, and help as possible, and that's what I want to do. I want to continue to be able to do that um, uh, in a constructive way, collaboratively with the Fresno County Superintendent of Schools. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, with Michelle coming on board, I think it's going to be a, another good time, a good, another good four years of, of focused on kids and doing the right thing by kids. She'll do a fantastic job. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I just want to remind people, Masamoto, the number four, fcboe.com and you can go learn more about marcy on that uh, but i'd really encourage you to you know if, i think if you just google uh, dr marcy masamoto that will come up and you can get a chance to see it uh, i wanted to just share with folks i've got a, a little flyer here uh, fresno county board of education growing healthy kids and minds that's her motto um, uh, says experience and trusted leader i'll verify that advocate for early literacy i'll verify that i mean everything on here career technical education college prep you know all of it and think about this folks uh, the nice thing about Marcy, she's endorsed by both sides of the aisle. That's something really, really healthy. We've got uh, Congressman Jim Costa, Fresno Sheriff Margaret Mims, Assemblyman uh, Joaquin Arambula, um, myself, I happen to be on that list. There are a lot of good people, 19 trustees and 11 school districts. I mean, you've got a lot of folks that have, are, are backing you because you've been doing a good job and you've got a long history of doing it. Thank you for what you do. Uh, looking forward to the election coming up in November. It's going to be here before we know it. It's right <laughs> around the corner. Larry, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's been a fun conversation. Well, enjoyed having you here. It's hard to believe, folks, but that's another uh, finish to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. We will see you next week. Next week.